In this lecture, we'd like to build out the responder for the man or help commands. If you remember, when the user asks for man, aka manual, or help, both of those event binds are going to call the same responder, cli.responders.help. And so we want to fill out this function with a typical man page that you'd see in any terminal-based application. When a user asks this question, they ask man or they ask help, we want to list out all the commands that they're allowed to ask as well as a semi-thorough description of that question so that they can see it in more detail. Remember, the only time a user is going to be saying man or saying help is if they really don't know what commands they should be entering or if they're unclear of the syntax. And so let's define all the commands that they are allowed to ask. I'm going to go down to where we codified the inputs earlier, and we're going to base this new object on that old array. So I'm going to paste that in here, and then we're going to have to modify it because that was the contents of an array, and now it's going to need to be the contents of an object. So let's take out these commas and enter in some empty strings. So each key of this object is going to be a command, and then the value of that key is going to be a description of that command. We're also going to rearrange this order a little bit. so that the order we're presenting it to the user is most relevant to them. So the exit command, we're going to say kill the CLI and the rest of the application. For the man page, we're going to say that this is just what you did right now. Show this help page. Help is an alias of the man command. Stats is get statistics on the underlying operating system and resource utilization. List users is going to show a list of all the registered, aka undeleted, users in the system. More user info is actually going to need to be modified in its key because the command that they're entering isn't simply more user info, it's more user info dash dash and then a user ID. We're using these brackets to represent a variable that the user should put in. Any admin looking at this should understand that this command needs them to modify the bracketed portion with their own variable. So more user info dash dash user ID it's going to show details of a specific user. List checks is going to need to be modified in its key to list checks up dash dash down, either or. So we want that to show a list of all the active checks in the system, including their state. The dash dash up and the dash dash down flags are both optional. For more check info, we want to modify the key to be dash dash check ID. And we'll say show details of a specified check. For list logs, we can leave that key as it is. Show a list of all the log files available to be read compressed and uncompressed. For more log info, we want to change the key so that the user knows they need to specify dash dash file name. And we'll say the value is show details of a specified log file. So that's all the commands and their descriptions. Now that we have that, prior to presenting this to the user, we actually want to do a little bit of formatting. 
typically when you see a man page or a help page, you see horizontal lines all the way across the screen, a bit of a title section saying, this is the man page, etc. And so we want to include that kind of thing. So we are going to call some functions that will let us build a header. So we want to show a header for the help page that is as wide as the screen. So we're going to build a function called cli.horizontal line. And that's just going to draw a horizontal line across the console in whatever width the console currently is. So we're calling that and then later on we're going to build that. Next, we want to write a title called CLI manual, but we want it to be centered on the screen. So we want to call CLI centered and then pass it the string CLI manual. Then we want to call another horizontal line and then some vertical spaces. So CLI vertical space. And we want to pass it two because we want two vertical spaces. Now you should be getting an idea of how these functions work. Horizontal line draws a line, centered should center some text on the screen, and then vertical space adds some returns. We will go back to actually writing those functions in just a moment. But for now, let's assume that they're doing what they should. Now that we have the header in place, we want to show each command, in other words, loop through this object and write out each thing that the user is allowed to do. So show each command followed by its explanation in white and yellow, respectively. So let's start looping through this object. For var key in commands, so we're looping through up here, if commands has own property key, then we want to continue. So we want to say that the value equals commands key. So now we've simply gotten whatever the value of that key was. Now we want to build the line that we're about to write to the console. So we want to say that the line equals some text that makes it yellow, which we'll fill in a second, plus the key, plus the end of that expression. If you remember, we are writing colorful things to the console down here. So I am actually just going to copy what we're doing here all the way up to the M after the number. And I'm going to paste that here, but change the 34 to 33. Now I want to go get the rest of that string after the percent %s, because remember the percent %s is what allows console log to take whatever is here and put it between these two escape codes. So I'm just going to take the end of this escape code and paste it in here. Remember, you can simply write this way to the console log. You don't need to have the escape codes and then follow that up with the string. You can just wrap the string in the actual bits and pieces of the escape codes. And that's what we're doing here. Now we want to define how much padding that we need. So we want to say that the padding is going to equal 60 minus the length of the line that we just defined here because we want to say that var line equals that, and the padding equals 60 minus line dot length. I know that was a little bit confusing. Let me just repeat here. We are defining a key. We're wrapping it in escape codes to make it colorful. That is defined as line. We're getting the length of that line, and we're subtracting it from 60, so we know how much padding to put after this key so that everything that we write after this key ends up vertically aligned. And this will make more sense when you see this all written to the console. So we want to do a for loop now. So for i equals zero, i is going to be less than padding, i plus plus, we're going to add a space onto this line until it equals 60. So all of these lines, once we get through with this loop, are going to have a length of 60. So everything that comes after them is going to be aligned. So we have line plus equals value. So we're actually adding the value on to the end. Now we're going to log out the line and we're going to enter a vertical space. After all of this is done, 
after the for loop is complete and we've logged everything out, we want to enter another vertical space. And then we want to end with another horizontal line. Before any of this is going to work, we are actually going to need to write these functions that we used up here, horizontal line, centered, and vertical space. So let's create the vertical space first. CLI.vertical space is a function, and it takes in the number of lines that it should write to the console. Lines should be a number, and it should be greater than zero. If not, it's going to default to one. So now we're going to do another for loop for i equals zero i is less than the number of lines, i++. plus plus. We want to console log an empty string, which will, in effect, include a carriage return and move on to the next line. All right, now we want to create a horizontal line across the screen. So we want to say CLI horizontal line is a function doesn't take in any inputs. Before we write dashes across the screen, we're going to need to figure out how big the screen is. So we want to get the available screen size. For that, we're going to say that the width is equal to process standard out dot columns. Now we're going to build a line which starts as an empty string and then do yet another for loop, adding on dashes to that string until it is the same width as the number of columns of the screen. So for i equals zero, i is less than width, i plus plus, we want to append a dash to the line string. And then after the for loop is done, we want to just log it out. So console.log the line. Lastly, let's create the function that lets us create centered text on the screen. You can probably anticipate how we're going to do this. We're going to need to get the width of the screen, just like we did before, calculate how much padding we should have on the left side of whatever we're writing, put in the padding using a for loop, and then write the text, and it'll be centered. So cli.centered is going to take in a string, which we're going to have to sanity check. String equals type of string equals string, and it has a length. If so, we'll take it in its trimmed version so that the spaces on either side of it don't mess us up when we're trying to center things, or we're gonna default it to an empty string and go ahead and write it anyway. So just like before, we need to get the available screen size. So I'm just gonna copy that from here. Now we need to calculate the left padding there should be. So for left padding is going to equal math.floor. So we're gonna round down the width of the screen minus the length of the string that we're writing to the screen. So everything that's left, when you subtract the text from the width that's already there, then divide it by two and round it down. Obviously this won't be exactly centered if there aren't the correct number of odd or even pixels and we're rounding down, but this will be pretty close to centered every time. So then we actually want to put in left padded spaces before the string itself. So again, I'm going to start with an empty line. That's just an empty string. Then I'm gonna do a for loop, i equals zero. i is less than left padding, because that's the amount of padding we're putting in, i plus plus. And then for each path of this loop, I want to add on plus equals another space. And after the loop completes, then at the very end, I want to add on the string. So the padding comes first and then the string. And then I want to log out the line. 
So now that all that is in place, let's go ahead and start this up. But I'm going to make the screen bigger so that you can really see. Starting up the application, I'm going to ask for help. And it wrote out what we wanted it to. We have a dashed line going all the way across the screen. We have centered text telling us that this is the CLI manual. We have another dashed line. And then we have keys and values. The keys in yellow, the values in white. Key, value, key, value, key, value. And we terminate by adding another space at the end. And then a dashed line all the way across the screen. And so anyone who needs help figuring out how to use this application can simply type man or help and get this output. In the next lecture, we're going to move on to writing the response to stats, which will be another pretty output like this that will give users stats of the current operating system usage and all that kind of stuff. So we can move on to the next lecture.